loading bridge. Uh, as we said earlier, this is the safest place to load weight, right? Because all of it's here. <laughs> if we look at this, um, each of these weigh about 22 and a half pounds. Um, there are little variants because some of them are cast iron, some of them are steel, and there's some switch there. But give or take, they're about 22 and a half pounds. So we can counterweight a lot of things, okay? As stated earlier, this is almost the top of the theater. We're about yeah, 45 feet at our feet. So we've gotten up here pretty high. There's a lot of stairs. Most theaters don't have elevators. Although many people I've worked with over the years complain about that all the time. Um, you have to do stairs. I've been in quarantine. So I was winded when I got up the stairs, but that's a different story, okay? So when we're talking about loading weight to balance things, it's important to understand that basic pulley system we were talking about, right? Um, we can't always uh, keep things perfectly in balance, although that is the goal, right? So in the few instances where things have to get kind of out of balance to get things correct, to get to that process, right? I can't put 300 pounds over here and keep 300 pounds when I'm adding weight. There's gonna be a period where they're a little off, right? And there's a few different ways to do that, and we'll go a little bit more in detail on a few of the other safety steps we can take to be able to make sure that we don't have a crash or a runaway line, right? Um, there's some things that we can do to lock the ropes together. There's, uh, we can do things with the battens to make sure that we keep tension so they can't move. And we can talk about a few more of those processes as we uh, progress through the class. But um, so just some things to talk about with safety with loading. If you can't keep them perfectly in balance, and you are looking at ways to lock things off but might not know, one, always ask somebody. One of us does, I promise you. And if you're on a call or something, one of the supervisors should otherwise run. Um, so we also wanna make sure that the heaviest thing is down in those instances, okay? Talking about things being balanced, if the heaviest thing is down, nothing can move, right? If I have 300 pounds on that side and zero pounds over here, well, this is gonna be here and nothing's gonna change, right? It lets me then add weight to balance that object. And that's the end goal. In that scenario, perfectly safe. Um, but before we can load weight and do all that, we need to make sure the area is safe. So one of the things we never wanna do is pick up that 22 and a half pound brick and drop it, right? Never a good idea to drop anything. I've done it to my phone enough to know that. If you drop something from up here though, it gets a lot of velocity. So it's a good idea, one, to not bring butterfingers up here, right? We normally empty our pockets when we get this high as well, because we don't want to drop our keys for the same reason. But we want to make sure, one, that everything's pretty clear and that people know that we're moving stuff, right? So similar to when we say, attention on deck, line set eight moving, like we said earlier, uh, we would like to let people know the same thing again up here. And this is not so much to make sure that they know something's moving, it's to make sure they are cleared out from underneath us and to make sure our math's right. Somebody has painstakingly done the calculations on the fact that that piece of scenery is 300 pounds and how many bricks we need to add, or they should have. So when we do this, our person on the deck is gonna call up to us, hey, add this much weight to line set eight, right? And they'll say bricks normally, they don't normally make you do math when you're up here. So you'd hear, add eight bricks, line set eight, right? And then you would say, adding eight bricks, line set eight. And that call and repeat is how you know you're safe and clear underneath you. Because then they'll say, thank you, and then you're clear to go, okay? That process is gonna be something like this, right? Uh, I'll be both parties. So, hey, add one brick, line set eight. And then I would say, adding one brick, line set eight, I would loosen this, pull it up and tighten it, right? And this keeps this uh, top plate from moving. Pretty regularly, there are also clips, which you can see some if you look really close down there. They're gator clips, like we discussed in class. If they don't have these beautiful things here that hold it, you can put a gator clip underneath and it'll keep it secure, okay? So we would then grab a weight, like so. Some of them are cut. Some of them have a little corner cut out of them. In that case, you just wanna make sure you're alternating corners. This lets you grip them easier. But the biggest thing to think of is always keep two hands on it for one, 
because right now I have four or 22 and a half pounds over a lot of people. Hopefully not over a lot of people, but so you keep two hands until you get on and then you rotate across, put the bar into the groove, lower it down. Never let your hands get pinched. That sounds like an easy thing, but it doesn't really hurt, but it'll give you big blood blisters. Okay. Because it's a piece of metal clear. Once you get it on here, push it back towards the spine of the arbor. What that's going to do for you is make sure that everything stays in one spot. If you start getting them a little wonky, it just does weird things. Loosen it. Tighten it back down. Make sure this is secure. Once again, this stops things from wobbling. And then I would say, eight bricks loaded, line set eight, or whatever number they gave you. In this case, one. Um, and then they would say, thank you. And then we would go through a testing weight process. Okay, when we're testing weight, the idea is that somebody stays on it and is holding it together, holding the ropes together, and somebody loosens that rope lock, and we get to see how close we were with math. Because if we're a little off, somebody's done a little calculation, ideally it's not a lot. Normally it's one or two bricks, right? A manageable amount of weight for that lock. Um, because you will see if it's really wrong. Uh, because if somebody were to add a lot of weight to this, this front rope would sag a little bit because they're putting more weight than the locks can handle. So as long as everything looks tight, you're normally okay. It could still be way out of weight. So you just want to ease into things. Double check math. When we're calling and repeating, that's the biggest thing. We want to make sure we heard the same number. Because if you heard four and the number was 40, things don't work too well, right? Okay, so that's most of the stuff here on the locking rail. The last thing I'm going to talk about is, in the off chance you actually have to stack these, which you will an out when we're taking a show down, we want to make sure that we're never stacking weight higher than this. And that's for the same reason. A lot of theaters aren't fortunate enough to have this clip, right, to go over the top. A lot of time it's just flat. People will stack stuff up, and then it gets over the top. And for the same reason of everything else, we want to make sure the weight stays up here. And if it was to be stacked up here, you could trip and knock a stack of weights off the edge. Never a good idea. Keep them low, keep them tight, and keep the space clean. Other than that one random brickway down there, this is a pretty nice walkway. You shouldn't have to trip or walk on weights to get to what you're doing. Okay, so for the last section, for the actual theater part of it, we're going to take a walk up to the grid, the highest part of the theater, and talk about a few of the parts and components up there.